everybody. I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Officer for Enterprise DNA, and I'm extremely excited today to have with me Antrik Sharma, um, who is our in-house resident DAX expert and the author of two new courses that we've got coming out um, on Friday, January 28th. Um, one is the most comprehensive course I think that's ever been done on DAX Studio, and the second one is a follow-on course on DAX optimization um, using DAX Studio. So kind of taking the, the, the learnings of the first course and applying them to advanced DAX and optimization. So I'm um, happy to have Antrish here with us today and um, welcome. Thank you, Ben. Thanks a lot. First of all, thanks you. Thanks to you and Sam for providing this opportunity to bring this course in a, to, the, to the much bigger audience. Otherwise it would have been just a project in my mind and I was always thinking that I should do a course on it, but I never had that inner motivation, you know, unless someone pushes you to and encourages you. And I am Antrik Sharma, and I have been a data analyst and business analyst for five, past five years. And majorly, I work with Power BI, Power BI, Excel, Python, and SQL. And whereas DAX has been my primary focus for last one or two years or so. And I have started learning. I started learning optimization about three years ago. When I, I actually was trying to get more advanced into DAX, and I realized that if you're if you're just trying to be a beginner, then it is fine. But when you try to nest multiple DAX functions and you write to you start to write more complex queries, then much late, much sooner than later, the code will really become slow. And I think it is really important to understand what is actually happening behind the scene because once you understand what you are writing and how the DAX engines are conveying those thought processes and those functions, you will be able to get a better hold of writing better DAX queries. So thus, we have decided to create this course on DAX Studio and optimizing DAX. It's great. Yeah. And I, I think it really is going to add a lot to our, to our course offerings and to the progression, mm -hmm. the learning progression for for folks working on improving their DAX skills. I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, to go, to go back a bit and talk about your journey with DAX. Um, I know you shared with me kind of when you started, it, it started off a little bit rocky and, um, you know, kind of how you yourself progressed to the, the expert level you're at now. So I think the major factor in being able to learn the DAX is to be able to solve other people's questions because I think I I think I first picked Power BI back in end of 2016 or start of 2017. And at that point for the whole year, I think I only wrote basic queries such as sum, sum x, all the aggregate functions and never used calculate. And the first time I actually got to hear about calculate, I think it was already five, six months because I was not paying too much attention to what DAX is and how I can make best use of it. But the moment I started reading, learning from others, I realized that it is really complex. If I'm going to only use these functions on my own projects and my own Power BI file, I'm always going to limit myself because there is always a boundary that what we are doing is always right. And unless we start to solve other people's problems, we will not be able to reach to the next level. That's when I got called into Enterprise DNA Forum. And first, I was really hesitant in solving other people's theory because I thought people might think this guy doesn't know anything, but, but gradually when I started learning as well from other experts, I realized that I, I also have some, I can also gain some experience from others. And that's when, that's when my brain started to work hundred percent. And I really started to think how DAX really work and how I can come up with multiple solutions. So I think solving other people's questions from different forums has been the major factor in being able to learn that that's for me. Yeah, I think I think that's been a huge thing for me because you get you get stagnant in your own work. You know, you kind of learn what you need to do for your own work. Yes. And once you get to that point, unless you keep challenging yourself with new problems, you don't progress. Okay. And and more specifically the enterprise DNA challenges. Those really make you think a lot because I can always work with the sales data, but the challenges that you bring are really more real world oriented. So a working with the sales data is really easy, like a contoso database, but 
then trying to get into a more complex one really makes you think that you cannot just go on with a basic data set. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've found that too, just in working through the current one with the the uh, machine data, you know, yeah. just kind of, there there are some some DAX challenges and some data prep challenges that are that are pretty unique in that one. Um, I wanted to I wanted to talk to you about um, you know kind of from the perspective of somebody taking these courses. I know for the DAX Studio course, it really progresses really from somebody who's never used DAX Studio up to you know what I would consider to be an expert level use mm -hmm. of DAX Studio. So wanted to get your your thoughts on kind of for somebody approaching these courses, where would you expect them to be kind of in their DAX journey before taking these? Or, you know, is it something that you think, you know, even people, even people starting out on DAX can benefit from learning, you know, particularly DAX Studio? I think anyone who has just started with DAX will not be able to understand what we are trying to do because we are trying to query the data model and Curing is one part and writing DAX measures and understanding what is a calculated column, what is a table, is a very beginner's thing. So curing is the next level, but you should know how what is actually DAX. So even if you're coming from Excel and you, and you know uh, about some function, min, max, that is not really going to help. So I would suggest that first you take up the free courses from Sam that he has already uploaded for the mm -hmm. DAX. And in case if you are already a member, then you can take up the more advanced DAX patterns and try to basically understand how to use the calculate function, how to use variables. Because in the course, I'm not going to teach that how to declare a variable and what is the return keyword. So I assume that the person has at least about one month of experience in DAX mm -hmm. only. And then they can make the best use of DAX Studio course because Turing is a bit more difficult topic. And I think, you know, in, 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 in looking at this from my own perspective and progression, you know, I think it's one of those courses that you'll, depending on where you are in your journey, you'll, you'll kind of get up to a certain point, kind of use the, the tools and techniques you talk about, and then come back to that, that same course later and kind of pick up more as you, as you progress. Is that, yeah. is that kind of what you've been thinking as well? Right. Because that studio is like a supplemental tool. It's not, the main tool for working with Power BI. So you come to it when you want to use it and when you're trying to do something that Power BI cannot do because you cannot extract data just from the Power BI without using the external tool. For that, you need a tool such as DAX Studio or maybe other tools as well. And let's 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 kind of jump into the into the second course too, because this is one we're calling the the optimization masterclass. And so this this one's got a got a higher bar for entry. And so Wondering kind of what you think, kind of where you would expect people to be before starting on this one. I think the same goes for this course as well. There is no dependency. It, there is no a lot of dependency in the first and the second course. So I'm not telling you how to click somewhere or what is the drag and drop functionality. So if you know about the DAX language, I start with a very basic language, very basic English using, I'm I, sorry, I use very basic English to explain. So even if you are a beginner who is coming from Excel or any other different programming language, you will be able to understand what we're trying to prove here and what we're trying to explain, such as there are two engines. So I'm not going to use complex jargon for tech terms. So in a basic language, because I'm also a business analyst, I do not have a computer science degree, so I cannot make it really difficult for anyone. So, <laughs> I have tried to create this course in a way that even if I try to come back to it five years later, if I leave the power BI for five years, then I should also be able to understand what I did back there. Mm. So this is going to be really easy for anyone who is going to take this course. It's not really difficult at all. And I know, um, I know there was there's a, a period, and I, I tell the story that you know when we were talking about working on another project together. You um you said oh, I'm taking I'm taking a month away and I'm I'm all I'm doing is studying DAX query plans, yeah. and yeah. you kind of immersed yourself in that, and I'm wondering you know from that experience kind of what that did for you in terms of your your own expertise and kind of what you feel that 
people, even people with a good fundamental understanding of DAX, how they can really elevate their skills through better understanding the, the how the query plans work. I think with the help of the query plans, people will be able to understand what what part of their code is sending one specific request to both of the engines. So knowing that is really important. For let's say you only understand that there is a formula engine and the storage engine, but you also need to understand that what part of the code is getting executed by which one of that engine. And once you understand that, you can mentally try to think that I need to balance the load between one engine and the another one because one of them is a slower one and the other one can scale up to multiple cores. So in case if you have a CPU that has 64 cores, your code is going to be extra, extremely fast than, than what is going to be performance on my system. So once you understand that, and you also understand that what part of that query plan corresponds to the XM SQL code, you will be able to relate that, okay, so at this stage, the engine decided to execute this query. So how can I write it in a different way and see what is the actual difference that, it, that, is, that is appearing in the query plan? So that is something that you will be able to learn from this. And in your experience, you know, in, in optimization, you know, what are some of the types of gains that you can, by applying the techniques that you're talking about, what, what sort of percentage gains do you think people can achieve in terms of how much faster they can get their DAX to run? At, at first, I would say that DAX optimization depends on from data model to data model and yeah. the kind of DAX code that you're using because let's say you are using filter function, but filter is an iterator and you nest that function multiple levels deep inside a function, then the DAX engine will have to materialize that whole table so that it can answer the caller or the end user. But if you think like you can use calculate to prepare the filter context first. Then you can you can actually push that condition that you're writing inside calculate or calculate table directly to the storage engine. So there is a possibility that if you're using filter, it is only resolved by the by the formula engine, which is a slower engine. But if you try to think that okay, first I should execute the where clause and try to push it as the e down in the query plan, then you can gain a lot of benefits. For example, maybe the filter function is running in two seconds, but once you prepare the filter context beforehand and it is getting injected into the XM SQL code, maybe the code runs in 200 milliseconds or maybe 20 milliseconds. So it totally depends upon the scenario, but I, I would say that by looking at the query plan, you can always easily understand that if the function is getting natively executed by the storage engine or not, or how you can actually make modification to the code. Because let's say if the code is so complex that the storage engine cannot execute that, then it will call formula engine for the for the resolving that particular code. And that information you will be able to find out in the query plans. So based on that, you will understand that this particular piece of code that you've written is not getting uh, simplified. That's why the storage engine is not spending too much time on that. And that's why the code is really slow. So if you can understand that, then you will be able to identify more ways of solving that scenario. And I always tell people that the best way of optimizing a code is to think creatively, because if you're going to use only one way of solving a problem, then you will not be able to find out much better options. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things that always fascinates me about Power BI, both in terms of Power Query and DAX, that you can take the exact same problem, give five people the exact same tools, and they'll come up with right. five completely different ways to solve it. And I think I think that that remains endlessly fascinating to me. And I think, yeah, that sort of creativity that you're talking about, you know, in terms of understanding when you look at those five different solutions, understanding how those are going to be processed by by the DAX engines and which of those are going to be more efficient. That that's that's an incredibly valuable skill to have. Yeah. And and I think the only way someone can start to learn or get better in optimization is by testing the code again and again. So it's not that you just run one code and you think that that's the most optimized approach. I would say that try to write all three, four codes side by side 
and try to call them one by one and try to understand that what is the actual difference then you will then, then your brain will be able to think and work at 100% and think that okay so this code does this this code does this so mm-hmm. that will help and my 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 suspicion is that you get to the point where you can you can recognize some very common patterns um, so there, yeah. there are probably things, you know, you, you get a lot of optimization questions, you know, on the forum and elsewhere. And my guess is that with, with a lot of those, you can immediately look at them and say, okay, this is, yeah. this is a common bottleneck and I know exactly how to solve that. Yeah. So last thing I want to ask was just, you know, your advice in terms of for, for people working through the course of both courses, do you have some tips for kind of how they can get the most out of it in terms of how, how you think if you were in that situation, kind of knowing what you know from putting the course together, how would you work through the course? Um, I think the, the major benefit of the course is that you have the access to enterprise being a forum. So if you ever get stuck, you can always ask a question. So we are always there to guide them. And I think start spend a bit more time on the theory part so that you can understand that the tabular is a different technology than the relational database and once you start thinking in terms of that you will be able to make best use of the course and i would say that one hour per day should be more than enough so that the things that i'm trying to explain can really sink in and i think that should be Great, great. Well, hey, I really want to thank you. This, this is just an enormous effort. I mean, it's, it's what about eleven and a half hours total, total content, yeah. and that's that. You know, even taking that course is a big investment, but putting that course together is a huge, a huge effort and a huge accomplishment. And really want to thank you. We're, we're very fortunate to have you as as part of our team and the expertise Absolutely. you bring. And um, really looking forward to folks taking this course and giving us feedback on it. I think, um, I think it's really going to be a way for, for folks who are looking to elevate their, their DAC skills and their understanding to, to really make a, make a huge jump. And so thanks. And um, we will be talking soon. Yep. Have a good day. All right. You too, Ansh. Take care.